we're going to start this video at the back of the knee. So after passing behind the knee joint, the popliteal artery here splits into two. Anteriorly, we can see the anterior tibial artery. Continuing inferiorly is the posterior tibial artery, which continues all the way down the posterior aspect of the tibia, supplying the posterior leg along the way. It then passes posterior to the medial malleolus, which is this bony prominence here, and underneath the flexor retinaculum, which is this fibrous band here. It then makes its way into the foot. So that's the medial malleolus, that's the flexor retinaculum, and that's the posterior tibial artery, which terminates by bifurcation into the lateral and medial plantar arteries, which supply the plantar aspect of the foot. You can palpate the posterior tibial artery just here, around halfway between the medial malleolus and the Achilles tendon. The first branch the posterior tibial artery sends off is the fibular artery. We then have small tibial nutrient arteries which branch off to, to penetrate the tibia and supply the bone tissue. A bit further down around the mid shaft of the tibia we should see a communicating branch which connects the posterior tibial to the fibula artery, giving us some, some redundancy if one is blocked off uh, approximately. We then have a posterior medial malleolar branch here, which anastomoses with the anterior medial malleolar branch, which comes from the anterior tibial artery. We have a calcaneal branch, around the back here, supplying the calcaneum and the skin across the heel. And then lastly, we have our, our terminal bifurcation, which is into lateral and medial plantar arteries, supplying the plantar surface of the foot. Bring in the muscles of the plantar foot now, we can see the posterior tibial artery slipping in comfortably above the adductor hallucis muscle, just here. And now let's take a step back and bring in the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. So you can see an, uh, a pretty interesting relationship between the, the tendons passing beneath the flexor retinaculum and the posterior tibial artery, which we've just been talking about. So from anterior to posterior, we have tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. The posterior tibial artery sits between these last two. I like to remember the order of these structures with the mnemonic Tom, Dick, and Harry. Let's add in a couple more relations, the, the posterior tibial vein and the tibial nerve. So now if you want to take things a step further, you can go Tom, Dick, and very naughty, Harry. The V and the N for the, the posterior tibial vein and the tibial nerve. All right, let's take another step back now and, and we'll remove gastrocnemius, soleus, and plantaris, so that we can see how these, these three structures, the posterior tibial artery, vein, and the tibial nerve, are pretty closely related through the entire way down in the posterior compartment of the leg. One final thing uh, I'll mention before we wrap up is, that, is how the, the bifurcation of the popliteal artery into anterior and posterior tibial arteries occurs at the inferior border of the popliteus muscle, just in case that's useful for your exams. Thanks so much for watching, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.